Hi, this is Katie from the Bone Clinic. The exercise we're going to focus on today is the bent over row. In this exercise, we will be pulling the load towards ourselves. Pulling is a basic human movement pattern that is often neglected in our modern lifestyles. Most of us don't tend to climb trees or pull ourselves up cliff faces very often anymore. So in order to strengthen these pulling muscles, we can perform a rowing exercise. The bent over row will strengthen numerous muscles of the middle and upper back and shoulders and will also challenge the deeper postural muscles of the torso. If you have watched the previous videos in this COVID-19 home exercise series, you'll notice that there are some common themes or core messages running through them. And some of the, and one of these uh, is the concept of spinal stability. Learning to stabilize the spine really is key for safe exercise practice. Remember that the spine is strongest when it's in neutral. Back injuries occur most commonly when the spine is flexing or twisting under load. For people with osteopenia or osteoporosis, the most common type of low trauma fractures that occur are vertebral compression fractures. They're often referred to as crush fractures. And sometimes people are not even aware that a crush fracture has occurred because the symptoms can range from really severe debilitating pain right through to little to no pain. And because back pain is very common in our culture, often the pain will be attributed to muscle strain or some other cause and the fracture may not be diagnosed. Crush fractures are often discovered in an x-ray taken for some other reason at a later date and sometimes many years later. Crush fractures can occur when performing simple day-to-day -day tasks, but especially those involving bending or twisting. But they can be caused by poor exercise choices, sometimes by performing exercises that you may assume to be safe, such as sit-ups or certain yoga poses. Now, some exercises like sit-ups or headstands are best avoided completely, but most exercises can be modified to suit our capacity and our pre-existing conditions. I don't want to make you feel afraid to exercise, but I do want you to be aware of the dangers so that you can maximise the benefits of exercise while minimising the risks. Because of course, doing nothing is not going to be helpful either. Magical thinking or ignoring our condition and avoiding exercise is risky too. This pathway will lead to increasing weakness and fragility and falls and fractures in the long run. So remember that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Developing a sound understanding of just a few key concepts can save you from potential injury. I've outlined and explained concepts like spinal stability in more detail in the previous videos in this series. And so if these ideas are new to you, I recommend that you go back and review them. I hope that having watched the previous videos and exploring and thinking about the movements as you perform the exercises, you will now be developing a sound understanding of not just the concept of spinal stability, but what it actually feels like when you achieve it. I recommend that whenever you start a new exercise, that you start with a load or intensity that is below your current capacity. So it should feel light and easy at the start. So start low and progress slowly to give all the tissues in your body time to adapt to the new stimulus. Always take the time to think about your alignment and the quality of your movements as you practice the exercises. 
If you have pre-existing conditions or injuries, the need for good technique and careful progressions increases. So I suggest that whenever you start, that you start with a light challenge. Don't, you shouldn't feel challenged when you start. And then through consistent practice, you can gradually increase the challenge to build your capacity over time. There are many different variations of the row exercise, but the variation that I'm going to demonstrate in this video is the single arm bent over row. And the asymmetric nature of this variation challenges the stability of the whole body through the hips, the trunk and the shoulder girdles while working the muscles of the back and shoulders. The deep stabilizing muscles of the core need to work very hard in order to prevent flexion and rotation of the torso. So to get set up, stand in front of a bench and now organize your alignment. So align your ear over the center of your shoulder, hip, knee and ankle joints. And then we want to stiffen the torso. So we want 360 degrees of stiffness. So all of that nicely braced. And then we're going to hinge at the hips and place one hand on the bench in front. So you'll see now my hips are flexed, my knees are slightly flexed, my shoulders are square to the bench and my spine is neutral. And this beautiful stable position is what we want to maintain throughout the exercise. So from here we take a light weight and this is the start position with the arm extended and we're, now we're just going to think about pulling the weight up to the side of the rib cage and then lowering back down under control. Think about lifting the elbow towards the ceiling and lowering back down under control. Make sure that you pause at the top and fully straighten your arm at the bottom. You can think about squeezing your shoulder blade in towards the spine, controlling on the way down, allowing the arm to lengthen. Pull the elbow towards the ceiling, pause and squeeze at the top control back down. So work hard to create smooth coordinated movements. Each repetition should be a mirror image of the one before it. I recommend that you do 12 repetitions on one side before changing to the other. And if your last repetition is not as perfect as the first, that's a good indication that you need to choose a lighter weight. So once again, take time to get your setup right and then pulling the elbow towards the ceiling and control back down. Pull the elbow towards the ceiling, squeeze the shoulder blade toward the spine and control, allowing your arm to lengthen at the bottom. And of course, you don't need special equipment. So for this exercise, I find that a handbag is perfect. Although I do know that some of you will need to jettison a few objects in order to lighten the load first. Get yourself organised, get yourself set up, nice stiff torso and then pull the elbow towards the ceiling and control back down. So this top position is the hardest, so make sure that you pause before going back down again. So be careful not to rush through this hardest part because often speed hides need. Pause at the top and control it down.
So this exercise appears simple, but it is easy to muck it up. And some of the common faults include some spinal faults. So be careful that you were not overextended or overarched through the spine. And you also need to be mindful that we're not rounding or flexing the spine, particularly as we pull the load up, be, be careful that you don't round over. And with the head position, we want to maintain neutral head position throughout as well. And the head position really feeds into those spinal faults. If you let your chin lift, for instance, that really feeds into that overarched position. And if you let your head drop, that really feeds into that overflexed position or that rounded position. So we want to maintain neutral head position throughout. And I like to just think about um, maintaining that double chin position, or in my case, it's double chins. So getting ourselves like so, maintaining that head alignment. Also be careful of the uh, elbow position. So we don't want the elbows sticking out to the side like a chicken wing, but we also don't want it tucked in against our body either. We're after that Goldilocks position where the elbow comes out from the side a little bit. Uh, with our wrist, just be mindful of the wrist position. Some people do some funky thing at the top with their wrist and they curl the wrist over. But what we want to think about, you could think about um, your lower arm and hand as a knee hook hanging from the elbow. So that the wrist just is hanging, is um, staying nice and neutral. So we want this straight position of the wrist. We don't want deviation in any direction. With our shoulders, we really want to make sure that our shoulders are staying square to the bench. We want to avoid um, any rotation. We want to avoid, especially as we pull that load towards ourselves, we want to avoid round, um, rotating. We also want to be mindful with our shoulders that we're not lifting them up and we when we row, we want to also take care that we don't let that shoulder drop forward. So the shoulder girdle is very complex. And without going into too much detail, I just want to touch on a couple of uh, things that I think will really help you with this exercise. So firstly, we want to keep the ball in the socket. So the head of the humerus is the ball, and that's the head of the humerus, that's the bone in the upper arm, is the humerus. And the socket is part of the shoulder blade. So what we're looking for here is to maintain a good, solid relationship of that ball and socket. And there are, there are muscles and tendons and ligaments that are helping to keep that ball in the socket. But also, by my being mindful about our alignment, we're really going to be supporting the health of those tissues. If you let your shoulder dump fall, what's happening with that ball and socket relationship is the is the ball is slipping, is pushing forward a little bit, just a little bit out of the socket. So you're not, not maintaining good congruency. And so what that means is that um, it's just putting unnecessary strain on the ligaments and, and those rotator cuff muscles. And the other thing is uh, the shoulder blades. So we just want to make sure that we, we can keep um, natural movement of the shoulder blades over the rib cage. And especially we just want to be careful that we don't just pin them 
together and, and not let them move. So at the bottom position of the row, we've got our shoulder blades set down and wide. But on the working side, when we pull the weight up towards our body, the shoulder blade should move in towards the spine. And then as we lower the weight, the shoulder blade moves back out wide again. So there's a little bit of movement in that on that working side. You don't need to overthink it. Um, I think that the main thing is just be aware that there is some movement there that we don't want the shoulder blades just locked down in one position. Anyway, as I said, the shoulder girdle is complex, but I think probably the best way to develop good natural movement of the, of the shoulder blade is to manage the load because by using too much weight will cause compensation patterns that will be difficult to unlearn. So remember that we need to consider our chronic conditions and to match our workouts to our, capa our capabilities. I suggest that you always start with a challenge that's less than your current capacity so that you can learn good movement patterns and stay safe. We can then lightly challenge our capacity by making small incremental progressions over time so that with persistence, you can build a strong body safely. Anyway, I hope this helps. Thank you.